<laughs> That's right. When you hear that gong, normally it means only one thing. It ain't gonna end well. The dead man cometh. <laughs> so now, uh, this is a special episode celebrating 30 years of The Undertaker. A.K.A. Mark Calloway. Are we allowed to say that now? Well, he's said it enough times. <laughs> so why not? Uh, no. <clears throat> so, it all started November 22nd, 1990. Yes. Survivor Series. That's right, yeah, his debut. I mean, he thought he was going to be the Eggman. <laughs> he thought he was going to be in the egg, which turned out to be the Garbody Gooker. <laughs> it was actually Hector Guerrero. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, Christ. I don't think I started watching wrestling until like 93 or 94. WrestleMania 10, I think my first one was. But when when I first saw The Undertaker on TV, I wouldn't say like I was scared of him, but he had that presence. You were like, "Oh, hold on!" I was like, "How can why can no one damage him?" Because at the <laughs> time, like the character he was portraying, mm. he was he was pretty much immune to pain. I remember Jake Roberts DDT'd him like four times. Yeah, that's right. And the DDT was protected at that point, like. Mm. It wasn't a common move like it is now. <laughs> yeah. And he hit like four of them and he kept getting back up. I was like, wow. Yeah, I'll probably say... It was my first memory of him. Probably WrestleMania 14 was my first. Although the first one I ever stayed out to watch was the following year, 15, with... Uh, <laughs> ah, the, yeah. the infamous cell match where, <laughs> where they got a bit of stick. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> Taker versus the big boss man. <laughs> yeah, that was a match that doesn't get talked of much these days. <laughs> I mean, when you look at all his victories in the streak, they don't really mention that match all that much. A bit like how they don't really talk about the John Gonzalez. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he actually spoke about him was it in that oh, one of his documentaries recently mm. he spoke of John Gonzalez because <laughs> he said like he was going to work with him in WCW and then like he followed him to WWE yeah <clears throat> no it's like one thing he's always been good at was he's always been quite good at reinventing himself oh yeah Yeah, I mean, sort of, you've had many different incarnations of The Undertaker himself, because, well, um, I think it was like when Paul Bear was first introduced, he was sort of like, literally like an Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Christ, they did this thing where he was in a funeral parlour, like yeah. he had his own chat show. Well, I say chat show, he didn't really say much. <laughs> Back then it was just sort of like, yeah, you will rest in peace, and Paul Bearer did most of the talking. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I remember one time when they were in a, literally in a morgue with a, a, a dead body. Yeah. <laughs> on the table. Oh, man, those early years were great with Paul Bearer. He was like, my undertaker. <laughs> and the urn. Yeah. And then, of course, we then got the introduction of his brother, mm. which really took the character to a whole new level. Yeah. I mean, up until that point, you, you didn't really know much about The Undertaker. No. But then when Paul Bearer did the whole, oh, he's coming, mm. your brother's alive. Yeah. Suddenly, you're like, you, you saw a different side of The Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that WrestleMania match with Kane. Good grief. Mm. Was Kane the first one to kick out of the tombstone? I think he might have been. Um, yeah, quite possible. Yeah, because yeah, obviously uh, Kane first appeared at 
bad blood. Mm. Oh, yeah, he ripped the door off. Yeah, Shawn Michaels hell in a cell match, and then yeah, then it was the following Mania, weren't it? Mm. Yeah, their match. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Bad Blood was 97 and they fought at 14, which was in 98. Mm hmm. Yeah, they've had some matches over the years. Oh, just a few. That's one of those rivalries that just it goes on and then they team up for a bit and then they fight each other again. <laughs> yeah. Sort of speaks volumes about it. I mean, Kane always talks quite highly of The Undertaker. Yeah. And like he helped him in his career. Hmm. It's like their WrestleMania 14 match, brilliant. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> tombstone him what three times? I think it was in the end. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. And then the month after, they did the Inferno match. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a few of them matches <laughs> over the years. Most of them involving them too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Kane does love setting people on fire. Yeah, because what? Wasn't there a first ever match where like Kane got like pushed into it and his arm yeah, got on fire? That that was the first one. Yeah. I thought as much, but I thought I'd verify that with you soon. Because that was the one where where they escaped the flames because Undertaker dived over the top mm. rope. That's right, yeah. Great match. Mm. No, I mean then like to push things forward a bit. Undertaker took some time off for an injury. Yep. And we got the introduction of the American Badass. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, although it's surprising to look back and realise how long that... How short that character was actually around for. Yeah, I think it only lasted about three years, four years. Yeah, because he... Well, he, he sort of moved on from the American badass after about a year or so and you had like the dead man ink oh yeah and biker undertaker big evil yeah which I called him booger red <laughs> god here yeah. undertaker mm -hmm. but at the time it worked because I mean in the attitude era a lot of gimmicks were they got real it was yeah less characters more like proper real life things. Mm, yeah, yeah, so. so I think American Badass worked quite well. Yeah, he had yeah some, definitely. He had some great matches around that time. Yeah, because it was Judgment Day, weren't it? He came back for Triple H versus The Rock. <laughs> yeah, they played that really well because at the time there was all these promo videos saying like he's coming yeah. and, you, and you didn't know who it was. No. That was very well played out. <laughs> And then, like, he came back, he choke slammed all of the corporation. Yeah. Accidentally cost Rock the title. <laughs> Just funny, one, one of the funny memories of Taker, Biker Undertaker, I always remember is uh, when, he, when he got drafted a Raw. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> First ever draft. Oh, he was oh. pissed. Yeah, because they had the camera zoom in on him and he he stood up and... <laughs> Did he storm out? Yeah. I think he even, like, kicked a chair over as well. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> oh. Rick, what were you playing at? Yeah, it's because he had been feuding with Ric Flair at the time. Like They, yeah. they had just come off of a WrestleMania match. Oh, yeah. Where they beat the hell out of each other. Hmm. Where, again, Ric Flair speaks ridiculously highly of The Undertaker and helping him get his mojo back. Yeah, he really did. If you'd seen the match Ric Flair had with McMahon like two months before. Eey. Oh, God. Dreadful. <sighs> now, one of my favourite memories of Undertaker was one of his first rivalries when he came back as American Badass. He had a rivalry with Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. Where Kurt Angle was celebrating and he was like throwing all this stuff around and he ended up throwing a big old pitcher of milk on Undertaker's bicycle. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. And they had a rivalry which went up till fully loaded 2000. Yeah. It was a great match. Look it out if you, you're mm. interested. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was definitely a good one. But yeah, he did 
that kind of gimmick for about three years, three or four years with the motorbike. Yeah, and uh, conveniently, it was around that time where probably one of my favourite Undertaker rivalries came along. And conveniently, it's been recently covered by WWE on the network. I loved his rivalry with Orton. Yes. When Orton was the legend killer. <laughs> yeah, so the year before, like, they did this storyline where Kane buried American Badass Undertaker. Yeah. And he came back as the dead man. Yeah. It was like, and the return was done really well. Because you had the rumble, you had his gong going off, but he weren't there. Mm. And Kane got eliminated. <laughs> Because he was like, I married you, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you didn't know what Undertaker was going to come back at WrestleMania 20. Yeah. And then, like, the gongs go off when you hear the Paul Bearer thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Sim <It's> Jail. <laughs> oh, God, it is. Paul Bearer. <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah and and he came back and it was sort of like it was a mixture of Undertaker and American Badass because he still had the more American Badass gear yeah but he was back in like dead man character yes yeah. then we had like the rivalry with Orton yeah um, I'm trying to remember when that sort of officially kicked off to start off with it was 2005 yeah right. um, it was because I think they had their first like pay-per-view match at SummerSlam? No, WrestleMania was the first one. Oh, okay. oh shit. Yeah. yeah. Bloody hell, that was a build enough. Because that was the first one where like the streak properly was mentioned. Yeah. Because up until that point, it was just, yeah, we know he had a few wins, but they weren't making a big deal <laughs> of it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But Orton was on fire at that time. He was back to being legend killer. Yeah. Because he, he had a couple of months with being a good guy, which he did not like. <laughs> yeah, that's putting it politely. I'm being PG. <laughs> and yeah, him and Undertaker, what? They had a ride for about seven months, I think it was. Mm. Maybe longer. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, go to the network, watch The Untold. Yeah, because um, I, think, I think it ended Armageddon. Yeah, I think. yeah. The Hell in a Cell match, Armageddon. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, because they had... Um, yeah, and was it... Was it SummerSlam time they brought in... They brought in Daddy Orton. Well, he interfered in the WrestleMania match. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 because he had the cast. He had the cast. On his arm. <laughs> yeah. Which he's been wearing for about 20 years. <laughs> Is that injury ever going to heal? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and then like they did the whole SummerSlam thing yeah. where Orton got the win back. Yeah. Then, oh, what was the next one? No Mercy. I think they did the casket match. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the handicap casket match. <laughs> where, like, only recently we found out Orton came close to setting himself on fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you had like Undertaker's big return at Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Which, <laughs> convenient, right? <laughs> Not something around Survivor Series. And then like the big blow-off was the Armageddon match. Yeah, hell in a cell. Cowboy got busted yeah. open. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't talk they, about that. <laughs> they all bled in that match. Sure, oh, agree. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just great rivalry. He's had a few of them. One of my favourite rivalries that he was in, Triple H. The most recent one? Not all of them. Because, I mean, oh, they're okay. all a yeah. continuation of each other. Yeah, yeah. That's a fair one. Because originally they fought at WrestleMania 17, which was a great match. Yeah. And then, like, years later, they came back and Triple H was like, yeah. I want another crack at it. Yeah. They told this great, I don't know, five-year story. Right, it started yeah. off with Ric Flair. Yeah. <clears throat> then Ric Flair got retired by Shawn Michaels, and he wanted to retire. Yeah. So that moved on to Undertaker. Yeah. 
And after Sean had retired, that moved back onto Triple H. Mm-hmm. Which culminated in the end of an era match at oh. WrestleMania 28. Yeah, oh, bloody hell. I'm going to say, all of the matches with Triple H were just brilliant. Mm. There were a few moments where you genuinely thought, oh my god, streak gone. <laughs> yeah, and at that time, WrestleMania entrances were starting to get really big, and we were just like, what entrance uh, is The Undertaker going to have this year? Yeah. Because he came, became known for the spectacle. Mm. Yeah, cause one, one year he had, uh, he had Metallica for he, he had like the Metallica song for his entrance. I think that was one of the Triple H. Well, Triple H had the Metallica song. He had for whom the bell tolls. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and and this year, Undertaker had a Metallica song. Yeah. He had oh now we're dead. When he came back on the yeah. motorbike. Yeah. Yeah, and then. Um, I think it was one of the Undertaker matches. He had the, he had the Terminator entrance. That was Triple H again. Yeah, 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 yeah that was. One. No, th- that was that. Triple H and Sting, from Thirty One. Mm. I swear he had one like movie themed entrance with, with Undertaker, possibly. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm just getting confused here. I think. So. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, no, no, that was a great rivalry in a rare insight of good storytelling. Yeah, it can happen. <laughs> and at that time, Undertaker was only wrestling, that was his thing, once a year. He'd yeah. beat himself up at WrestleMania, have a year healing, and then come mm-hmm. back and do it again mm. the next year. Because i got to give him credit. I mean, he wrestled through injuries, he wrestled with injuries. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, going back in time... King of the Ring, 98. Yeah, I didn't know that one. He had a broken foot. Yeah. It's like, it's only, I only found that out recently. And then when you watch that match and he jumps down from Mm. the cell and he lands on his feet and you can see him like going, oh, Mm. fuck. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, there was another one, uh, it was one of the Elimination Chamber matches. He came out and the pyro burnt him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he had this big old red mark coming down his chest. And he wrestled the entire match after suffering second degree burns to his chest. Me guessing that pyro guy probably got fired. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) So yeah. And then um, it's funny, obviously with the recent Last Ride series, um, obviously we got a bit of an insight into... How close of a relationship he's got with the boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they've had a few matches in that time. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. I always remember the Buried Alive match from Survivor Series 2003. <laughs> where, like, Vince was doing this... I don't know, it must have been the start of it. He was doing like this religious gimmick at the time mm. where he's saying like the higher power is going to save me yeah. and he came out praying and Undertaker's just bashed him right in the face <laughs> Seriously, the first <laughs> shot of that match busted Vince open <laughs> oh dear yeah and then of course uh, Taker's had a couple of matches with Shano yeah yeah which quite so. Them their matches quite surprised me, but then at the same time they were uh, a little bit too far at times, like Shane kicking out of the tombstone. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. But no, still uh, still decent matches though. It's just sort of one of them things, you know. Taker can have a good match with anyone. He <laughs> could essentially. Most of the time, uh, he's even had a few good matches with Big Show. Yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, of course, he's had uh, he's had a few matches with Big Bad Brock. Oh God, yeah, a ton of them. But then I think it's a bit different there, where there's that 
mutual respect between the two of them. It's not so much uh, screwing around and sod it, I'm just going to beat the crap out of this guy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't do that with Undertaker. No. I don't, I don't think anyone has properly gone off on him. No. Because if you know backstage, Undertaker is considered the locker room leader. You know, the, mm. the authority. And he was the judge at Wrestler's Court. <laughs> oh, God. Who can forget Wrestler's Court? I mean, I would love for them to do a proper series on Wrestler's Court. Yeah. Where all, all the wrestlers who've been in it tell their stories of like, mm. the punishments they got. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, so and then... Um, I think the only slight disappointment, apart from a couple of obvious ones of like recent Taker, has been um, I would have liked to have seen them do a, a proper decent match between him and Bray. Yeah, that was. I mean, they had a match at WrestleMania 31. Yeah, but obviously that was the year after the streak got. Broke. Yeah, that was the year after. Yeah, and it was just a bit. Nah. And at the time, I was like, I was still pissed off that they ended the streak in the first place. Because mm. I didn't think it ever should have ended. And if it was going to, it needed to go to someone who could take on the mantle. Yeah. Because I'm still of the opinion that it shouldn't have been Brock, because what did he gain from it? Yeah. He was already... He's already Brock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. He's not, he's not going to get any bigger from doing that. No. Nope. And yeah, the Bray Wyatt match, I'm not sure if you know, but Bray Wyatt actually injured himself the day of WrestleMania. Ah. So Bray was actually injured himself that WrestleMania match. Right. And like they had to work around it. Mm. And it was quite remarkable that they got anything out of that match at all. Mm. Yeah. Because it wasn't a bad match per se, but it was just like a nothing match. Yeah. He only took one tombstone and yeah, that was it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, one rivalry that I think we should give an honourable mention to is a rivalry with the with the Doctor uh, Thugonomics. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That was a pretty decent rivalry as well. Yeah, I mean, at the time, that was 2003. Yeah. Cena was doing his Doctor Thugonomics gimmick. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Cena talked a bloody big talk. He did in that rivalry. I gotta say, at that point, they accomplished their goal because I wanted Cena to get his ass kicked in that match. Yeah, yeah, and he did. Oh yes, yeah, because he had that, he had that really good promo just before the pay per view where Cena was like at that great yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he pisses on the gravestone. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure they, they lit this... Oh, what do they call that symbol? The, the hexagram or something? You know, the the, yeah. the satanic symbol. Oh. The pentagram. Pentagram, pentagram yeah. And he, like, he lit it on fire and there was Cena standing in the middle of it. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this has actually done quite well. Yeah. <laughs> and the match was decent. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they even had a WrestleMania match years later. Yeah. Wasn't quite the WrestleMania match we were expecting. No. Seen again, his ass kicked for three minutes. <laughs> it didn't go on for very long. Ooh. But at that point, I think Undertaker was just happy to be out there. <clears throat> yeah. Because, oh, what was it? I think he had missed the year before. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, and obviously he talks in the last ride about the regrets of missing that one. Yeah. So, so yeah, and then sort of, if you want to bring it full circle around to like this year, obviously he had his brilliant match with AJ. Yes, in the boneyard. Mm. 
Which at the time we didn't know what it was going to be. I mean, no, no one knew what a boneyard match. They didn't even know what a boneyard <laughs> match <laughs> was. I'm <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> but I like to think to myself, what would that match have been had you know the whole COVID pandemic not kicked off? Would they have had a proper match in front of people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I imagine that if, well, Taker said it himself, AJ was the one guy he wanted to work with. Mm. He was the one. But I mean, I think that would have been a five star match even without all the gimmicks and whatnot. Oh, yeah, definitely. Simply because AJ, like Sean, can work with anyone. Oh, yeah. And get a good match out of anyone. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed the match at Mania. I thought it was really good. It was really good. AJ trying to be sneaky with uh, some help from a couple of good brothers. <laughs> yeah, they, oh, yeah, they appeared out the barn. Yeah. With all, all the druids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that part. Yeah, yeah, that was good with all the druids and trying to attack, attack the Undertaker. <laughs> and he just beats up all of them. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was a brilliant match. Most definitely. My my only probably regret. I mean, I know we didn't get the Sting match, but that didn't really bother me all that much. Because mm. I know a lot of people wanted the Undertaker versus Sting. Yeah. But I think at the point it was going to happen, it wouldn't have been as good as what people were expecting. No. But my regret simply is that. They not only broke the streak, but then they had Roman beat him mm. in a match where he himself didn't like it. He struggles to watch it back. Yeah. 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 And it was like, if you were going to beat him once, yeah, fair enough. But why a second time? Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and obviously the original plan for that was, you know... He's going to retire after that match. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of glad he didn't. Mm, yeah. Yeah, there were, there were a couple of stinkers along the way, but they, <laughs> they, they, they weren't really his fault. No. And uh, we'll just say they were the Saudi show matches and oh. we leave, leave them yeah. at that. <laughs> and so we come back to it. And conveniently enough... This year, on his 30th anniversary, mm. it's actually Survivor Series is on his 30th anniversary. Very good. We, we've heard there's going to be like his grand farewell. Yeah. We don't know exactly know what that is yet. No. But uh, there's going to be some sort of an appearance from him in that, I'd imagine. Yeah, he's going to be there. I'm wondering how it's going to take place. Yeah. Because we're still in the age of no fans. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, and admittedly, part of me is a bit, you know, unhappy that is big moment, and there's going to be no one there. Mm. Just a bunch of video screens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably not quite how the company wanted to give him a send off, but you know, this day and age, it, and what we're dealing with at the minute, it sort of, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day, but they still want to commemorate it somehow. Mm. So, yeah, so, let's have a quick list. Standout matches for you. Mm. Probably any of the four or five from that rivalry, the two with Sean. Yeah. Oh, man. If I had to pick one of the, them, the Sean match at WrestleMania 25. Yeah. You know, the one where Undertaker kills the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. And then one of the ones with Triple H. I would probably say the end of an era one. Okay. 27 was brilliant, but the way it ended with him leaving on the stretcher. Yeah. yeah. For you? Ooh. I think I'll go for a couple of old school ones. So, see, one straight away. Mick, oh, King of the Ring 98. That was a great match. Yes. And how Mick even survived that match is beyond me. <laughs> how, he, 
how he's even still walking straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we never touched on that. I mean, he had a great rivalry with Mankind. Yeah. Even the Boiler Room matches. Yeah, because um, obviously there was a small period where Paul Bearer was managing Mankind, wasn't mm. he? Because he turned on The Undertaker for some strange reason. Yeah. Which was never properly explained. Right. So, a- any other ones? Just the Mankind match? No, 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 no. Um, I mean, obviously, I loved the Ministry of Darkness era. Yeah. Uh, wasn't as much of a fan of the corporate ministry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, I know we've already touched on it, but obviously, uh, Kane, Kane and Taker at WrestleMania 14. That was a great match. Mm. So, yeah, that's all like, the few standout ones for me. Obviously, we've already touched on some already. Just given like, a summary of his career in WWE. Right, now I'm going to hit you with one that he ain't going to like. Least favourite Undertaker match. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I got two off the top of my head. <laughs> okay. One one where you've gone, oh, what are you doing? Um I mean obviously one of the obvious stick out ones is um him versus Goldberg. Ew. Saudi show. Yeah. Botchamania. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, I don't know, I'd maybe chuck in one of the early Mania matches. Uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, I mean, they weren't... Some of them weren't necessarily his fault, but they just didn't come off as they should have been. I mean, obviously... Everyone mentions the John Gonzalez match. <laughs> it, it wasn't a good match. No. no. So yeah, there's, there's a couple from me. So, uh, what have you got? Well, other than the Goldberg fiasco <clears throat> and the tag match, you know, DX Brothers of Destruction, mm-hmm. where like Triple H injured himself and. Damn it! I just remembered one, but I'll but I'll see if it comes on conversation. But the other one. Undertaker and Big Show in the Punjabi prison. Oh! Good grief. Okay. The other one I've just remembered wasn't that. It was slow. It was plodding. I don't think either of them knew what they were doing. (laughs) It just... It did not work. No. That wasn't good. So go on then. Do do the other thing you're thinking of. Other honourable mention. I believe it was Judgment Day. Taker and Hogan. Oh no, yeah, it was Judgment where, Day. <laughs> where we got like one of the worst choke slams ever. Yeah, well, that was actually Hogan's fault because he, oh, yeah. he wouldn't jump. Yeah. In fact, if you slow it down, you can visibly hear Undertaker telling him to jump. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure he puts it quite as PG as that, but. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, there but... you go. At that point, though, Hogan should not have been champion at all. No. No. Because you think they did Triple H's big old road to redemption, and he lost it to Hogan like three weeks later. Mm. That's right. You know, you know, it was actually Hogan he beat for his first WWF title. Oh, yeah. Which I think was Survivor Series the year after. Which was not Survivor mm. Series 91. Yeah. And he actually beat Hogan for his what, fifth WWE title, I think the Judgment Day one was. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that sounds about right. And I think that is probably truly the legacy of the man. It's like he's not held the world title on that many occasions. But when they have, they've been meaningful yeah. and impactful. It's like he's always done something with them. In fact, mm. Thinking about it, he's not really won that many titles at all. No. He's never Intercontinental, he was never US. On the tag title, yeah, a few couple times. Of times. Yeah. He won a Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, was he ever in a King of the Ring tournament? <laughs> that's a good. That's a good question. I don't remember him ever being in one. No. I'll have to look that up. Um, uh, but again, he never needed it. No. 
I'm very certain Denny holds the hardcore title once. Yes, he beat Rob Van Dam for it. <laughs> Vengeance 2001. Yeah. <laughs> but th- that is the story of the character, though. It's like he was a character that never really needed the title. No, no. Definitely not. And I'm curious to see what they do with him going forward. Because he himself said that. Right, he's probably retired now, yeah. but never say never. Yeah. For me, personally, I'd like him to have one more match with Fiend. Yeah. But that would be it. If, if he had to do one more, that, yeah. for me, would be the last one. Yeah. You know, that's fair. And then you think, we're still going to see him. He's still going to make appearances going forward. Yeah. He'll probably still come out and choke slam a few people. Definitely. And yeah, and then when Hall of Fame comes around, he's probably going to have his own wing. More than likely. <laughs> what do you think? Has there ever been a guy who's been in the company, like one company, as long as he has? 30 years? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's unheard of. Yeah. Most definitely. The same, um, obviously. Depend on what they decide on this year's Hall of Fame class, you know. Obviously, there's talk of possibly just having this year's, but doing it next year. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think I think definitely, you know, it's got to be within the next couple of years they induct him. Easily. Yeah. Yeah, and like you say, they could fully just. So I just said, yes, yeah, just the Undertaker. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> Not doing anyone else. They don't need to do it anyone else. Hell, it might not even be WrestleMania. They could do it in next year's Survivor Series. Yeah. Yeah. It's that whole ceremony dedicated to him, just with mm. everyone he's worked with in his career. Bloody hell. Coming up saying a few bits. They have they got big enough a reach. <laughs> <laughs> They'll work something out. <laughs> so yeah, that's our little bit on the dead man. Yeah, celebrating 30 years. Ooh. It's going to be weird seeing the company without him. Oh, yeah. So, we hope you enjoyed that. Tell us some of your favourite memories, matches of The Undertaker. Leave them in the comments section below. And as always, from your hosts... The master of the brain damage. Martin. And the one and only Sam H. We'll see you again for the next one.